Beware, you're in for a scare. From the pages of Ariel Stein's best-selling books comes a brand new series of Goosebumps videos. Videos that will creep you out, freak you out, or simply make you laugh your head off. Looks like this time, hello Goosebumps fans, I'm going to go out of sequence, but most likely it will be in sequence, but when it comes to recording wise, this is the first one. So anyways, let's talk about Mask Mutant, that's right, we're doing Mask Mutant now, thanks to Pop Arena, and well, first things first, let's talk about the rewrite, because listening to how messed up the freaking book was, which the book was okay, and I have to admit, I still remember the actual episode. This is one of the episodes I actually did watch. I remember where I was when I watched it. I was actually at my grandma's house and there was no lights. It was completely dark. My goodness. <laughs> yeah. And I remember the whole, <laughs> they gave him a catchphrase. That was freaking funny. So rewriting this book. Me, I kind would like to actually keep everything that's in the book. But just expand on it, make it a little bit different, like a little bit something like that. He didn't even talk about how Wilson actually gave up on his stamp collection. He said more on that later. I guess he forgot about talking about that. <clears throat> well, anyways, I would. There's just a few questions that has to be involved. Like one is, how did Mask Mutant get into the world? Me, I'm like. Why not get to the point of where we're going to, because basically the 90s, heck the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, people wanted their hero to be on the big screen or somewhere, big screen, TV show, something like that. And I bet so many people are like, oh God, I wish Spawn the HBO show wasn't good. I wish it didn't exist at all. And there's like so many movies that people are like, I wish it didn't exist at all. Like for me, I wish that Green Hornet, that movie never existed because, oh my gosh, that was the worst thing I've ever seen. It's like, holy freak, you gave him all the rights to the damn movie. Oh my gosh. So the idea to this rewrite is very simple is that we're going to have the writer by some weird, crazy, magical way, which has to be like, oh, but how, how did you do it? It's like, well, it's simple. It's like, eventually he got to the point of where he has a friend over there who loves Dungeons and Dragons. And well, he's a writer. There's lots of people out there and he loves the guy loves Dungeons and Dragons. And he also loves to look into lore and stuff and lots of magical items. It turns out that his friend actually knows how to do stuff because, well, of course, this is a side story. This will be a side bit. It's most likely not going to be in a freaking book, but you have to read between the lines. The fact that he loves Dungeons and Dragons and he because most likely he actually at some point had made the pieces that his friends are using actually real realistic. They actually move by them themselves. So if he's able to do that, chances are he's able to actually get his character out of the damn book. So very easy. The artist, the guy who created the freaking mask mutant. He wants him out of the freaking book, out into the real world, and intimidate the people he wants to make the movie for the freaking character. So that's the easy part. It's like, that's the big whoopsies. It's the fact that the reason why he's out and he most likely is him who comes save the day. It's like, yeah, we have to change some stuff for it's like he comes in to save the day. And yes, of course, I know you. there was like a few others that showed up, like, for instance, I don't think we need to have the Magnificent Molecule Man. But on the other hand, considering he's like, I need help. Because, well, I'm just a person and Mask Mutant has all his powers. What the fuck I can do? And he's like, okay, I know a good idea. I'm going to bring Galloping Gazelle into this world too. Just in, not just in case. It's like, Mask Mutant eventually got out of control where he's like, I don't know where the freak he went. <laughs> and, I mean... Well, we have to make this take place in place in New York City or Hollywood. It's like it has to be taking place somewhere in California or somewhere in New York City. That's the only way how it makes sense. As for where he's located, it's like, hmm. 
it's like, I don't know, maybe he could actually be in New York City. Maybe he actually is there. So it actually helps instead of him being like, I had to get all the way over here. I had to look for him. It's like I had to hear news clippings. It's like, nah, it seems much better if he actually was in the same city or in the same state. And he's been looking for a little bit or at least he figured out where he went because, well, one extra thing that he could do is actually lift his evil Leia from the ground. It's like he can able to summon it into real life. Another power he able to have is that he's able to summon the his his base from out of nowhere. He's just able to summon it. It's just one power he has. So basically, the story will go down like this. Besides the backstory stuff of where it's like he has to explain of how this works. We have Skipper. Skipper's doing the same old thing. Should he have Libby? Should Libby be involved in this? Mm, I don't know. But of course, I have a video actually kind of doing the same thing where it's like, does he really need to be that? Does he really need to choose her out of anything? It's like, does that even make sense that he choose a girl? Anyways. So let's just leave Libby out of this. Libby is not existent. Maybe he actually is now a dude now or even crazier. It's like, hmm, that is a good question. It's like, does Masked Mutant actually know? He knows he might be in a real world. And maybe the creator said, here is what I want you to do. And sadly, the freak Masked Mutant is like, oh, well, fuck you, man. I don't care about your damn movie. I'm able to actually go out in this world and do whatever the hell I want now. And there's no superheroes. Are you kidding me? It's like, I can freaking do world domination. <laughs> or at least conquer the city. It's like the starting point. So it's like, my freaking damn gosh. And I guess technically the Magnificent Molecule Man could be in the base at the same time. So that means he's able to teleport whoever's in the base with him. Now the only question is, is that since he's able to summon his base from anywhere, how will he send him back? Which is like, well, this gets to the point of where we're going to have to rip off the Goosebumps movie <laughs> in some shape or form. Because he has to be sent back to. So that's what happens that Skipper. I would say Skipper most likely sees the mass mutant. He sees the mass mutant. He's like, what the frick? Actually, nah. How about he sees the base? And then same exact thing. And most likely, maybe we should have Wilson follow him too. It's like, yeah, because Wilson doesn't get anything out of this. It's like, Wilson is his friend, but yet he's been benched. It's like, he just gets. It's like, why don't we make Wilson the hero here? I even have some ideas of where it's like, hmm. How about we make Wilson the mask mutant? <laughs> it's like, what? It's like, yeah, we have Wilson who says he's been, you know, and it's kind of funny that the mask mutant could be anyone. And then he gets the questioning of where he's like, oh, my gosh, I never seen Wilson's family before. He never talks about his mom or dad. And it's like, dun, dun, dun. It's like, yep, Wilson actually is the mask mutant. That's one good good idea to do. It's like, yeah, just get rid of Libby, period, because that was kind of stupid. It's like, sorry, but that was kind of freaking him stupid. I mean, come on. So he sees the warehouse. I don't know. We're going to play with Wilson being asked me or not. So he goes to the base. Actually, no, he sees the base, but he has a dentist appointment. Same deal that happens in the book. And then after he has a dentist appointment, he decides to go there again. And he goes with Wilson. It's gone, of course. And well, you know, he got a comic. Apparently it's cloaked. They go there once more. They see that it's cloaked. They go in yellow light. Personally, I would say we don't turn um skipper into a comic book character instead let's make the yellow light be like it needs to have a person of comic you know it's like there's someone has to be with the person who enters in that has clearance so basically yellow light is clearance for a person to go in because he has just like you know usual security stuff like for instance edna mold she actually had to be with this person be it a Mr. Incredible or Elastigirl, and it's I scan Edna Mold and guess it's like exactly the same idea, but yellow lights. Like, well, we don't know this guy, 
Rock doesn't have an alarm just yet. He has someone else. Oh, that guy's the mass mutant. Okay, go right in. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that could work, which means Wilson might actually be the mass mutant in this version. So let's see, they go right in. Uh, let's see, she goes right in. She go, so new issue of Kogan. Uh, he checks again with Wilson. Surprise, there it is. Weird, the door is unlocked, yellow light. Like I said, they walk in, they got separated. He looks around. I think at this point, just maybe, just maybe there's some interesting stuff because, well, hmm. Yeah, because we have to change a little bit of stuff because why is he getting comic books if this is the way to do it? It's like, hmm. Other hand, what if Skipper, it's like, what if this, what if this, what if, the artist is the only one who can send the mass mutant and everything back to where it came from. And the artist decided to actually continue to send issues because, well, the mass mutant just wants him caged. So that means that if he has the artist caged up, the only way how he can do it is actually get someone to actually respond to him. And what he does is actually sends comic. Now, the interesting part is how does the comic get from his cell that he just created to skipper which let's say skipper is his biggest fan he wrote lots of letters to him hmm that's a good question i think most likely a gabbling gazelle could actually be a part of this too where or another hero who actually is able to sneak in and sneak out and as long as he's able to sneak in and sneak out because well this hero's a minor hero he's able to get a minor hero because he thought that the mask mutant could be able to be taken down or maybe the fact of, maybe the fact of this, the hero that he chose, which is Galloping Gazelle, is someone else. He's, he can defeat Mask Mutant, but only with he has this belt. And because Mask Mutant knows that, oh, the belt is the source of your power. Now he's not able to do anything because the belt is sealed away too. But the good news is that he still has a decent amount of power. And, well, technically Mask Mutant thought he defeated him. But yeah, most likely he kicked it on a cliff or something. <laughs> yeah, but he didn't know that. Oh, no. <laughs> because, well, before the belt, he actually does have minor powers. So what he does is actually use minor powers. I think maybe like some kind of ninja dude. That would be cool. So he used the minor powers and he's able to relay the two mat to comics before he gets caught. And he's like, oh, you're still living. And now he's in the prison as well. Let's see. So he's a printing press. There's stretch sketches of him on it. Okay. Libby shows up and left. So Wilson actually shows up with him. They left. A new comic awaits. The hero's captured. Basically, since he, well, that doesn't make sense, does it? It's like, yeah. So if it says the hero's cap, well, you could basically say hero's captured or B, the publisher's captured. Man, this kind of feels just like Big Bad Beetleborgs in a way now. <laughs> Oh man, well anyways. So let's see. So after school, he chats with Wilson. They both go and they go and save the hero. Maybe they go to have save the hero. Maybe Wilson's like, I don't know about this man. I went there last time and I kind of got scared to freak out. So how about you do it and I get to stay home? Because, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, so if that's how it goes, then let's see goes and save the hero the hero wonders if skipper's the hero so at this point where it's like the hero instead of saying the hero he basically saves the creator the creator saved he springs out the other hero oh my gosh and he gets to have his belt on there we go now let's see so the hero so basically at this point we have the mass mutant showing up and the mass mutant actually tries to take his belt away from him and meanwhile he's doing that the creator actually is now doing something that he needs to do which is he actually had a comic book already set up to capture mass mutant and his hero so as soon as he does that he captures them both and let's see oh yeah they have to get out of the freaking um building as well because as soon as he captured them both the building's now starting to collapse and crumble amongst itself and they both run for it so as soon as they both run for it uh 
as soon as both run for it. Yeah, so as soon as they both run for it, they got out. They got out safely, thank goodness. And, well, as a courtesy, he's like, well, I'm thinking about making a brand new hero now. And as soon as he goes, he actually has a new comic book. And the comic book is Skipper Boy or something or um, Stretching Dude. And it's like, oh, that's nice. And then click. Oh, no. He actually bleeding, ble bleeding ink. Dun 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 dun. So there you go. Hopefully that actually is good enough. I think that's good enough. So there we go. That will be my rewrite. Of course, there's like lots of stuff that needs to be tidied up, but I think that actually would work perfectly fine. It does have a big bad Beetleborgs vibe. Does have the Goosebumps vibe. And of course, for anyone who's like, oh, how did he do it? How did he do it? Because you forgot to say the item that he used to take him out. Oh, very simple. The inking pen he has has a crystal on it. And this crystal is who cares what the crystal's name. Let's say the crystal of Delcia or something. And the crystal of Delcia actually whatever touches on it. So basically, if you mark whatever with it, it comes to life. So basically made a comic book or you drew a drawing of the masked mutant. Heck, I guess you can technically take say get the original drawings that he actually drew them out of and he rips them in half and destroys them. That could actually work too. But I don't know. It depends on what you want to do. But there you go. Anyways, have a scary day, scary night, and coming soon are more videos on the mask mutant topic. Hopefully, if this is not the last one, which I don't think it's going to be the last one.